Hello, L.A. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to The Dead of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and leave first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who will be the lucky caller? You've got the first shot at Deb tonight. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, Deb. This is, uh, Vigo. Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working a late shift here at the, uh, Yacht Club. Uh-huh. How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is, uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um... You probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Um, yes. Arrivederci, Vigo. Caller two, you're on the dev of night. Be gentle. I am. Hello, caller. I am. Is tonight a rerun? Deb. Caller number three, what's keeping you up tonight? Deb, listen to me, Deb. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report this stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Conspiracy? This goes beyond conspiracy, okay? There's no word for something as devious and secret as this, you understand? The people need to hear this. They need to know the real story. You've got our undivided attention. All right. As we all know, the Americans established a moon base back in the late 70s. That's no secret. But what most people don't know is that they have been conducting a dig. Not for resources, but for artifacts. I see. Well, it's no coincidence that the Chinese have started conducting space missions. You know why? I'll tell you why. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from finding an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans, a.k.a. the Greys, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Fascinating. The American government's been putting more money into space. Don't you see what's happening? I can't believe I'm the only one that's figured it out. Am I the only person alive that can see what's going on? It's because the Andromedans and the Betas are going to be fighting their war in this galaxy through us, Deb. And the American people, the people of Earth, you people, cannot let this happen. It's Moo versus Atlantis all over again. Thank you, Gomez. And that concludes the news portion of the show. Well, this girl's got to pay her bill, so it's time for a few commercials. But don't go anywhere. I'm just getting warmed up. Or should I say hot? Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken-flavored products. Let's listen for which one they prefer. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Ugh! Oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, try this. Oh, oh! This is some good chicken! What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure! Um, oh, oh, seriously, draw these up your Here. Try this one. Mmm. Hey. Mmm. Mother fucking great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy fuck. Fuck, that's good. What the fuck is this shit? Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good fucking chicken. I mean... Friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken, you'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie, and the talking pig, and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally mute object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a granular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She wasn't like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm going to have to make a deposit. Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 in the BMC. Say goodbye to yellow teeth and spots in your dirty dishes. It's incredible. Look at that shine. Your smile or these dinner plates. 
Harnessing the secrets of ancient Egypt, now there's a dishwashing detergent so powerful, it doesn't just leave your dishes spotless, it actually whitens your teeth. Patented Timerly Spirit Toys remove caked on food and grease and remain on the plate to be absorbed into your food to clean your teeth while you eat. Dazitron, the dishwashing detergent of the future for cleaner plates and whiter teeth. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redmond to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. In a world where people live and die. Do you think you can just go in there and handle this by yourself? If that's what it takes, he was about to meet his greatest foe. Kill them all! All of them! And a girl. Hello. Hi. And a comic relief sidekick who won't make it to Act 3. I picked the wrong month to cancel my life insurance. No, don't say that. You're gonna make it. With a guy from that other movie that was slightly popular, and what's her name, from that show you sometimes watch. In a movie with two spectacular CGI battle sequences and an advertising campaign that will leave you no choice but to see this film. See it, because it's a movie, and all your friends are going. In theaters Friday, and on DVD in three months. Did you miss me? Judging by the way the boards lit up, I'd say you couldn't live without me. You make me feel so desirable, L.A. So many callers, so little time. If you don't get through to me tonight, don't let it break your heart. I'm here each and every a.m. So keep dialing those magic numbers and just maybe you'll be as lucky as this caller. What's your name, Night Owl? Hello, Deb. This is Greg. Hello, Greg. Up late, aren't we? Well, there, Deb. I work a night shift here at the power plant pretty much alone. Thing that gets me through this shift is your pretty little voice. Thank you, Greg. Why, well, I imagine if you're as half as pretty as your voice, then uh, you're the prettiest woman in this city. Aren't you the gentleman? I uh, imagine you a lot, Deb. Like I said, I'm all by myself, and it does get lonely. Sometimes a man can't help himself, uh, especially when I hear you. It's like you hear. Greg, there's a little thing called too much information. Caller, you're whiling away the evening with the Deb of Night. Good evening, Deb. Yes, I think that's implied by the title of the show. (laughs) Do you ever worry, Deb, that the world is going to end? I haven't felt that way since Brad Pitt got married. I bet you say that to all the girls. There is a red star in the night sky. The blood of mortals and the blood of ages all will be consumed. They are coming. These are the final nights. Okay, well, good luck in the next election, Senator. Apologies to all you night owls out there, but this girl's got something she's got to take care of for the next few minutes. Here's a little music to keep you up, if you get my meaning. Bill's here. Gotta run. Great breakfast, honey. Have a good day, dear. I'm glad you liked the muffins. Hey, what's that on the counter? That's not my margarine. That's butter. It's... Bitch! You know I'm supposed to watch my LDL levels. I I thought it would be a nice change. You couldn't even tell. You don't want a divorce. You're trying to kill me. I'm glad I slept with your sister. I thought it was margarine grade B butter. Other rancid taste of margarine with all the saturated fat of butter.
You are on fire, Bill. I finally took your advice, and you were right. I feel more confident than ever. You the man. Isn't it great? I couldn't even believe it. We went out to dinner, and afterwards, we started getting busy. I went into the bathroom to take it. I could feel it right away. Hell, you could see the title change in the toilet bowl. The Visor Track. For an ordinary drug enhanced erection, just isn't enough. Common side effects include fainting, tingling in extremities, temporary blindness, deathly pallor, time perception distortions, aggravated bladder syndrome, emotional incest, pronounced incontinence, delusions of grandeur, and elevated risk of stroke. Grandpa, will you take me to Space Burger? Space Burger, huh? You know, when I was your age, space was mostly a mystery. We didn't know what was up there. Why, I thought there were little alien kids on Mars that might be watching me. Yeah, I used to make signs for them saying, Hello, Martians! Or, give me a ride on your rocket craft. Of course, I was young and naive thinking Martians could read English. (laughs) Everyone knew Martians communicated telepathically through space operators on their moon base. Billy, what did I tell you about talking to Grandpa? But I want to go to Space Burger. Space Burger? This looks like a job for Commander Mom. Report to the space van. Oh, boy. We can drop Grandpa off at the home on the way there. Of course, you don't see Martians on space probes. <laughs> Everyone knows Martians live in invisible domes. Space burger. Food for the space age, not old age. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redmond to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children... Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. Money troubles need cash quick. Why not try mugging someone? These are exactly the kind of questions the criminals are asking themselves right now. Did you know that the government requires you to wait 10 days for a gun? Why, in that time, a criminal could kill your family 50 times over. So how does a law-abiding citizen like yourself get a theft deterrent system in their hands in the next hour? Come to Loophole Lenny's. We've got antique military weaponry from blunderbusses to World War I grenades. Modern muggers may be stronger and faster than they used to be, but that doesn't mean they can take a slug fired by a Civil War-era pistol any better. And if you're the kind of person that can't sleep at night knowing serial rapists might be in your front yard, we've got German sniper rifles approved by the Kaiser himself that'll make picking them off one by one from the safety of your roof no problem. Buy a weapon this month and we'll throw in an ammo belt with the Constitution printed on it free of charge. Loophole Lenny's, defending your tomorrow with the weapons of yesterday, today. Ah, oh, would you look at this? What's that? Plague of locusts descend on small Indian town. Jeez, I can't imagine what that must be like. And look at this. Civil war still raging between ethnic factions in Eastern Europe. Yeah, heard about that. And in Zimbabwe, they got to use ox carts for ambulances. That's terrible. Hey, it's a good thing we live in the U.S. It sure is, buddy. Hey, bartender, two more U.S. ales? U.S. ale. Welcome to the United States of Inebriation. The moon is out, everyone's in dreamland, and you've turned into the Deb of Night. Nobody to fall asleep next to? Go ahead and pull the radio into bed. That's what I'm here for. And hey, why don't you call me sometime? Area code 323-KL5-KTRK. Looks like somebody's been waiting in the queue quite a while to speak to yours truly. So, caller, why aren't you asleep? Uh, uh, insects. Insects? As in you have an insect problem? Or chirping crickets are keeping you up? Or you have nightmares about them? Help me out here. No, no, no. Don't you know? When you fall asleep, they can crawl into your mouth or your ears or, or your nose. You, you can't prevent it if you're asleep. I mean, you, what can you do? Are there any scientists out there listening to this? Um, I, I read something. I, I don't know where. But do you know the average person eats several pounds of insects a year? The majority of that weight is composed of roaches, ants, and spiders. Just knowing that as soon as you close your eyes, a big fat centipede is going to drop into your mouth and crawl down your throat... I can't do it. I never sleep at night. 
You know, they voluntarily eat insects in some countries. Yeah, well, those countries probably need Jesus. So, you never sleep at night. I assume you do sleep, right? Uh, I sleep at work. And what exactly do you do? I'm a middle school teacher. That would explain why my nephew invested that 20 I sent him for his birthday on magic beans. It's always good to know that the future of our country is in good hands, isn't it? Oh, boy. Let's see who else we got. Caller, what do you do for a living? I'm Roger. Okay, and what do you do, Roger? Um, I'm a writer, Deb. So, have you written any uh, movies I might have seen? Well, I actually haven't finished any screenplays yet. I see. So, have you done any other kinds of writing? Well, just some outlines right now, but I've got some really good ideas for some stories that are crawling around in the old noggin. (laughs) So, if you haven't really written anything, how can you call yourself a writer? Because I once fixed my toilet doesn't make me a plumber, right? Well, you see... Is there anyone in this city that doesn't call themselves a writer or actor or director? Don't you think you're doing a disservice to those who actually make their living in those art forms by deeming yourself something you're not or not even trained to do? Um, well, I think I'm pretty good at knowing what's good writing from bad writing. Well, wouldn't that make you a critic? Let's see if anyone else agrees. Line two. Are you ready for a menage a trois? Sure thing, Deb. And would you please state what you do for a living? I'm a personal assistant for a producer at Parasite Studio. Perfect. Do you read a lot of screenplays? Don't get me started. Well, for our writer on the phone, here's your big chance to pitch your screenplay. Is that okay, line two? Sell me, dude. Well, um, okay. So, uh, my story's about this guy. You don't say. Okay, uh, okay, so this guy, he's, well, he's like a, an FBI agent, but, you know, he doesn't really work for the main FBI, and, uh... He's got this partner who's new and really cute, but she's also a really good agent. And they're like a sign to this bizarre case where people are being killed in really strange ways. Uh-huh. And then, like, something happens and the girl agent gets kidnapped by the killer. Something happens. Yeah, well, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but... Like, the guy agent notices, like, how the killer seems to know everything he's doing, like, one step ahead of him. And then there's this kind of, you know, weird chase and, like, we find out that the guy's got two personalities. And, like, he finds out in the end that he's the killer. And then he's kidnapped his own partner. Well, Line 2, what do you think? You're going to option it or not? Uh, writer dude? Roger. Uh, Roger, would you like my professional opinion? Yeah. Where are you from? Um, Wisconsin. Okay. I want you to get all your stuff together, and then I want you to move back to Wisconsin. That's a little cold, Line 2. That's Hollywood, baby. Maybe it's just too good for you. Uh, no, dude, it's not. Break it up, you two. Final thoughts, guys? Wisconsin. I have some other things I'm working on, too. I got some pretty good ideas for video games, I think. If anyone's interested in hiring me, my number is 213... Sorry, Roger. The only one that gets to give out their number on this show is me. And if anyone was thinking of asking what I'm wearing, that number again is 323-KL5-KTRK. We're going to take a short commercial break. But that doesn't mean you can stop thinking about me. Don't go anywhere, boys. Does your penis always seem to be getting in the way? I got the last of the groceries, honey. I just need to close the trunk. One more nail and this birdhouse will be as good as new. I'm sorry, sir. This dressing room is for women only. You don't have to let this happen to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Fred Tuck. Don't let your penis interfere with the quality of your life anymore. I have performed over 300 sex changes in my career, and not one of my patients has ever asked for their tackle box back. Come to Tuck Sex Exchange in the next month, and I'll give you a free estimate. Don't let your peace interfere with your peace of mind. Tuck Sex Exchange, located off Beverly Drive. Look for the sign with Toothy, a surgical saw. Tired of sluggish internet access? Mom, the internet's all slow again. I'm not your mom. I'm the creature that evolved out of your mom. Sick of unwanted spam. Oh, oh, another email message from my old college roommate, Rod Uges. Oh, oh my. Computer problems make it frustrating to log on? Error 432, network access remote server memory allocation assessment table exceeded. Hard drive reformatting will now commence. What? Looking for something that requires no logons, no unwanted email, coherent sentences, and no technical problems whatsoever? Read a book. Books. The original internet. Terrorists are prepared to destroy the largest dam in America. Again. 
The Vengey bomb goes off, this Hoover will be caught with his panties down. And only this renegade cop and his ex-wife's manicurist stand between destruction and unexpected love. I'll just file you as D.O.A. This summer, all bets are off. The heat is on. The fix is in. The dogs are out. The game is up. The chips are down. The stakes are high. The odds are low. The danger is huge. The payoff is slim. Friendships will be made. Rules will be broken. Wrongs will be righted. And no unturned stone will be left. Uh, get ready to be turned inside out and upside down. Hoover 2, Hydroelectric Boogaloo. The best damn movie you'll see this year. When I'm grinding the reverse Poindexter 540 to Ollie northbound the contraband, I can't think about being bloated. That's why every morning I down a pound ground, a gentle extreme waxing sports drink. Because when you're pulling a wicked Skullcroft 720, you don't want anything to slow you down. Deb's back, and she's got a fresh cup of coffee ready to take it into the AM. In case you didn't know it, you're tuned into The Deb of Night on KTRK. I'm your lovely hostess. Feel free to fantasize about me all you want. But please don't send any more drawings. The lines are all full, so why don't I provide some release? Line three, you're speaking to me. Stop, Deb! And what have you been up to tonight, caller? Wink, wink. <laughs> I'm getting up. <laughs> I'm messed up, Deb! Woo! What's the occasion? It's a weekday. Touche. Hey, Deb. <laughs> hey, Deb. <laughs> hey, Deb. Yes, General? Oh, man. I had this amazing idea. I thought, you ready for this? All night. Y- you know all those problems we've been having in the Mideast? Yes. Those damn Virginians. Okay, okay. So, like, I figured this out, right? Okay, okay. So, if we want peace in the Mideast, think about it. What makes people peaceful? Smoking this in some And what brings people together? Pizza. So, like, think on this. For, like, half the cost of one of those, um, blockbuster bombs, we could, like, buy enough pizza and enough herb for, like, everybody over there. And then, like, bam! Instant best buds, man. Just say no, dude. Um, an extra pepperoni. Hey, you guys take credit cards? Moving on. Line four, what's keeping you up tonight? Deb, I'm about to reveal something that... I'm putting my life on the line. But the people, the people of this city and this country and this planet, they have the right to know this. Do you understand? What's the word, Gomez? This is serious. There are a lot of organizations that would do anything in their power to keep this a secret. I don't doubt. Deb, Deb, this is really serious now. Can I finish? All right. Everyone knows they've got cameras at every stoplight so that the government can keep tabs on our comings and goings. But did you know that they then sell access to their databases to the Illuminati, who has been using that information to compile a list of the most frequently traveled routes and then opening new locations of their well-known chain of coffee houses in the most profitable locations? And did you also know that they use those funds to suppress fusion and solar power? It all makes sense now. Well, they, the Illuminati control all the world's energy, and because they monitor all of our energy usage, they can tell who is not watching television, and therefore know who is not receiving the subliminal messages that they send to keep the sheep putting their money in banks and away from their secret headquarters, a.k.a. Wyoming. Amazing. Anything else that you've turned up lately? As a matter of fact, and again, I shouldn't be talking about this, but I believe it is everybody's right to know that recycling is a myth. All they do with those bottles and cans is collect DNA samples from your saliva so that they can clone you and train your clone to assassinate you and assume your identity should you go poking your nose into the whole global warming business. Thank you, Gomez. I hate to interrupt this mentally stimulating conversation, but the people who keep me chained to the console at this radio station, in my underwear no less, want you to spend money on this stuff. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redmond bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Rebens to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thor, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? Would you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? Could you trust your children's future to someone like that? 
Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Thorne for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts with frivolous lawsuits. Wouldn't this make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. Preparing for a business sales pitch but don't know how to sell your ideas? Try virtual meeting. So if we divert advertising away from expensive television spots and spread it around full-page ads in the leading men's magazines weekend... That's an idea, but here is what I think we should do. But I didn't finish. Yes, that's a good point, but everyone listen to my idea. But I think... That's true. However, I don't think that our target market will be willing to accept such a radical approach. Listen to what I have to say on the subject. Are you ready? Good. This is a winner. And virtual meeting doesn't just help with meetings. It can also prepare you for debating your ideas on the Internet. So, I think if the Democrats are going to have a chance at the office, they are going to have to embrace the more liberal sect of the voter bloc. Shut up. F***ed. I majored in political science. I think I know what I'm talking about here. Laughing out loud. You are so gay. Virtual meeting. The only meeting preparation device to own. That was a good idea, which was mine originally. F***ed. In 1984... A generation of children were introduced to a toy that became an instant classic. Twenty years later, that toy is transforming to blend into a whole new environment. Hey, Bob, right? Mind if I borrow your stapler? You want staples? Get some of these, Execucon! Ah! Take control of the noble office bots as they wage slave their secret war against the evil Execucons. Hey, I'm gonna be here pretty late. Do you mind if I get a cup of that coffee? Graffitron, transform! Coffee is for closers, office bot! Collect 30 different corporate robots as they battle for workplace supremacy. Look out, Optical Mouse Prime, it's cell phoner! I've got your number, employees, and you're all getting called in this weekend! Office bots! Transform and clock in. Deformers! You live. You die. And sometimes you get brought back to life. <laughs> this fall. I'm afraid. I can't see too well these days. Do you think you could go to the nearest village and pick me up a loaf of bread? Bread! Good! The new horror RPG from Troika Games. Bread! Oh, I can tell you where the bakery is, stranger. But before I do, would you mind picking up my little girl from the lake? You are the monster. Ah! Or are you? If you want to enter this bakery, you'll have to defeat me. And this torch! Frankenstein, breadlust, coming soon to a PC near you. Game! Good. Still awake? Something on your mind? Give me a call. 323-KL5-KTRK. Ask to speak to the cute one. Hey, all you night owls. Is the human race going crazy, or is it just me? Seems like all you hear is bad news lately. Anybody feel the same way? Feel like the world's cracking at the seams? Why don't we make that the topic for tonight? And if that doesn't work, you can all go back to calling in with the usual pervert stuff. Line five, you're on with the Deb of Night. So tell me, is society going to hell or not? I think so, Deb. And why is that? Well, for one, I lost my job a month ago, and our management gave themselves a bonus for it. I'm sorry to hear it. And just the other night, I happened to look out my window here in Santa Monica... It used to be a nice neighborhood. I saw the local diner where I've been eating my breakfast for years get shot to pieces. Can you believe that? Like, no one cares about anyone anymore. I hear it. And my neighbor's boy, she's been using speed since he's in junior high. Steals from his parents. That's a shame. Yeah, yeah, you know, there was a time when this sort of thing just didn't happen. You know why? Why is that? Well, because a man could beat a woman and children when they got out of line. They didn't even have to be blood. You could just slap the little bastard. <laughs> ah, the good old days. Why don't you hit the activity room and reminisce some more, Grandpa? Anyone have any musings that don't end up in assault charges? Yeah, hi. Whoa, here's a rare event, a female perspective that isn't my own. 
Go ahead, sister. Um, I just wanted to say that I agree with you for the most part. Things have really started to suck in the last few years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like I can't see myself bringing a child into this world, you know? I hear you. Except if it was like Ash River's baby. Oh, he is so amazing, Deb. I would like populate a minivan for him. Oh, my God. Yeah, but what are the chances of that happening? I don't know, but I'm like at a club every night. <laughs> okay, but back to the topic. Oh, and, and this one time, I was working as a waitress at this award show, and I served him a drink, and he told me, think beautiful. And there was like a moment, definitely something there, you know? Sure, girl, but tonight's topic isn't Ash Rivers. Yeah, well, that's probably really good, because all of you other females better stay the hell away from him. You know what I mean? I'm glad to provide a public forum for the whacked out of both sexes. Let's try to stay on topic, shall we? Dead of night. That's me. I recently found out I was a vampire. <laughs> oh, I was one of those ones, and then it was November 1st. That's not a joke. I'm really worried about this. Uh-huh. This girl at the club took me into the bathroom, and she did something to me. Back in my club days, we used to call that a favor. Oh, caller, could you hold on? I've got Frankenstein on the line. Frankenstein, something you want to add to this conversation? I see. Your rebuttal, caller. I'm not lying. It happened to me. It could happen to anyone. Fire! Ah! Ooh, good point. You want some advice? Wash off the eyeliner, put on something that's not black, and go get a tan at the beach. Jeez, the Deb of Night show does not endorse the goth lifestyle, and take it from Deb, pretending you're a vampire only impresses people with similar physical ickiness. Next caller. Deb, I think the world's been messed up, is messed up, and will continue to be messed up. Oh, an optimist. Now, bear with me, but I know what the cause of all the world's problems is. Nipples on TV? Exactly. Nudity? Not too much nudity. Not enough nudity. Clothes make a person dishonest. They're hiding their true selves away under them. Clothes promote problems like class and sense of piety and concealed weapons. Why, how much do you think we spend on clothes as a people? What if that money were going towards science? Why, we'd be living in a futuristic techno world by now. Have you ever been to a nudist colony? Not attractive. The fact that you think it should be is a side effect of the prurient media. You're not desensitized to nudity. Just think, if the man at the movie concession wasn't wearing his pants today, you'd storm out of the theater in a tizzy. But in a nude world, it'd be popcorn and a medium soda, please. No, I think what would happen is I'd lose my appetite. And isn't obesity one of our nation's biggest problems? Another benefit of nudity. And what about all the hullabaloo that people make when a person walks around the way Mother Nature made him on a brisk spring afternoon? Arrested for public indecency? Why, in a nude world, it'd be commonplace. Folks would ask you, how many people did you expose yourself to today? As proud as I am of my girls, I think I'm going to limit them to private appearances. Next caller. Yeah, this is it. This time I've stumbled across something that's bigger than anything you could possibly imagine. A threat to the entire human race's existence. Ah, Gomez. You know, it's been a bad night when I've been looking forward to your call. Deb, nothing can prepare the world for this. This is the biggest story in the history of humanity ever. Ever, Deb. How I found this out, I can't say, but I'm risking my life to tell the world this. Are you prepared for this? Sure. People of Los Angeles, vampires walk among us. Ugh, not vampires again. Hear me out, Deb. Vampires are among us and have been since the dawn of time. In Los Angeles, well, there's more vampires per person here than anywhere else in the world. People are killed by vampires all the time, but their secret vampire society covers it up. Who blew up that warehouse in Santa Monica? Vampires. What happened to the crew of the Elizabeth Dane? Vampires. Want to know what happened to that sarcophagus that disappeared? Vampires took it. The Prince of Vampires, to be more specific. He wants to use it against a league of other vampires that have been trying to get a foothold in our city. And get this, there could be an even older vampire in the sarcophagus. An ancient super vampire. Right. Vampires. They're everywhere. You can't throw a rock in the city without hitting a vampire. It's the truth, Deb. The undead are all around us. We need to rise up and destroy our evil vampire overlords before it's too late. You heard him, folks. Gather up your crosses, garlic, and neck braces. Oh, brother. Well, Deb's not undead, but the sun will be up soon and she's dead tired. She's going home to get some hard-earned R&R. But don't worry. She'll be back same time, same station tomorrow night. Until then, fans, don't let the vampires bite. In a world where people live and die.
Do you think you can just go in there and handle this by yourself? If that's what it takes. He was about to meet his greatest foe. Kill them all! All of them! And a girl. Hello. Hi. And a comic relief sidekick who won't make it to Act 3. I picked the wrong month to cancel my life insurance. No, don't say that. You're gonna make it. With a guy from that other movie that was slightly popular, and what's her name, from that show you sometimes watch. In a movie with two spectacular CGI battle sequences and an advertising campaign that will leave you no choice but to see this film. See it, because it's a movie, and all your friends are going. In theaters Friday, and on DVD in three months. Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken flavored products. Let's listen for which one they prefer. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Oh, oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, try this. Oh, oh! This is some good chicken! What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure! Um, oh, oh. seriously, job these up your ass. Here. Try this one. Mmm. Hey. Mmm. Mother f***ing great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy f***. F*** that's good. What the f*** is this sh-? Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Because that's some good f***ing chicken. I mean, friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken. You'll swear it's the best you've ever had. Bill's here. Gotta run. Great breakfast, honey. Have a good day, dear. I'm glad you liked the muffins. Hey, what's that on the counter? That's not my margarine. That's butter. It's... You know I'm supposed to watch my LDL levels. I I thought it would be a nice change. You couldn't even tell. You don't want a divorce. You're trying to kill me. I'm glad I slept with your sister. I thought it was margarine grade B butter. Other well, answer taste of margarine with all the saturated fat of butter. Bill's here. Gotta run. Great breakfast, honey. Have a good day, dear. I'm glad you liked the muffins. Hey, what's that on the counter? That's not my margarine. That's butter. It's... Bitch! You know I'm supposed to watch my LDL levels. I, I thought it would be a nice change. You couldn't even tell. You don't want a divorce. You're trying to kill me. I'm glad I slept with your sister. I thought it was margarine grade B butter. Other well, answer taste of margarine with all the saturated fat of butter. You love the talking baby movie and the talking pig and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally mute object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And 10 makes 100. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a glandular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! <laughs> She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She wasn't like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm going to have to make a deposit. Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 in the BMC. Does your penis always seem to be getting in the way? I got the last of the groceries, honey. I just need to close the trunk. Ah! One more nail and this birdhouse will be as good as new. Yo! I'm sorry, sir. This dressing room is for women only. You don't have to let this happen to you. Hi, I'm Dr. Fred Tuck. Don't let your penis interfere with the quality of your life anymore. I have performed over 300 sex changes in my career, and not one of my patients has ever asked for their tackle box back. Come to Tuck's Sex Exchange in the next month, and I'll give you a free estimate. Don't let your peace interfere with your peace of mind. Tuck's Sex Exchange, located off Beverly Drive. Look for the sign with Toothy, the surgical saw. You live. You die. And sometimes, you get brought back to life. This fall. I'm afraid. I can't see too well these days. Do you think you could go to the nearest village and pick me up a loaf of bread? Bread! Good! The new horror RPG from Troika Games. Bread! 
Oh, I can tell you where the bakery is, stranger. But before I do, would you mind picking up my little girl from the lake? You are the monster. Ah! Or are you? If you want to enter this bakery, you'll have to defeat me. And this torch! Frankenstein, breadlust, coming soon to a PC near you. Game! Good. Ah, oh, would you look at this? What's that? Plague of locusts descend on small Indian town. Jeez, I can't imagine what that must be like. And look at this. Civil war still raging between ethnic factions in Eastern Europe. Yeah, heard about that. And in Zimbabwe, they got to use ox carts for ambulances. That's terrible. Hey, it's a good thing we live in the U.S. It sure is, buddy. Hey, bartender. Two more U.S. ales? U.S. ale. Welcome to the United States of Inebriation. <laughs>